The start of winter is now on our doorstep, and Christmas is not far behind. Many are thinking of the holiday season, when the next snowstorm is, and what this winter season may look like. This video will detail the possible impacts of this winter and go through what you should expect in your area, as well as why this winter may be a strange one. So, let's get right into it. Firstly, we'll look at El Niño. El Niño is a temperature anomaly that occurs in the Pacific Ocean, and this is a map of where we look for an El Niño. When waters in these areas are warmer than average, El Niño is in place, and when the waters are cold, La Niña is in place. Currently, these waters are very warm, and are flirting with becoming a super El Niño, where waters are over 3.6 degrees above average. This has happened only three times in modern history. Since this El Niño is expected to be strong, we'll take a look at what that usually means for the states. Typically, the northern half of the country is warmer than average, while the southern half is cool in such a scenario. Much of the country is wetter than normal with the exceptions of the Ohio Valley and parts of the Rockies. Moving back to the Pacific Ocean, something interesting is happening with the warm waters I mentioned earlier, the warmth is moving westward. Originally, this El Niño was expected to be east-based, but now may be central-based instead. These graphs show the waters in the 1 plus 2 region, or the eastern region, cooling slightly during November and early December, while the waters in the 4 region, or the western region, continue to warm. To show how impacts can vary, here are some graphics depicting an east-based versus a west-based El Niño. The years are at the top of each map and a temp guide is on the left. During east-based, the northern U.S. almost always stayed warmer than average, while the south was cool. The coasts tended to vary greatly from year to year, leading to less confidence in many areas. However, as we move to central-based years, the cold air becomes considerably more pronounced in the east and south, while the west and especially the northwest tended to stay warm. Of course, not every year is the same, but a trend toward cooler temps in the east and south may occur during midwinter. Of course, El Niño is not the only factor that affects American winters. One of the biggest players is the polar vortex. This vortex is a large area of cold low pressure near the North Pole. Depending on the strength of the polar vortex, cold air can either be locked up well into the Arctic Circle, or can pour down into the States, Europe, and Asia, providing well below average temps. Typically, an Arctic outbreak, or when this vortex weakens, brings very cold temps into the central and eastern U.S., as was seen in February 2021. This cold wave brought insanely cold temperatures and snowfall deep into the south and lasted over a week, causing major damage. Another big factor is the North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO. This can also be called the Greenland Block, in its negative phase, which occurs when blocking appears in the northern Atlantic Ocean. When this blocking exists, cold and snowy conditions prevail in the east while warmth occurs in the west. The effects are flipped during a positive NAO. With a negative NAO, a low pressure tends to be present off the west coast, while a high pressure exerts itself over much of Canada. Looking at one of the forecasts for this winter shows this scenario occurring, with high pressure in Canada and low pressure in the Pacific. Another factor is the QBO, or a variation of winds that blow over the equator. Depending on whether these winds blow east or west, conditions can vary. Currently, the QBO is in an easterly phase, which tends to promote cold air outbreaks across Canada and the U.S. The last one we'll look at is the Madden-Julian Oscillation, or MJO, which depends on where areas of convection are in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. There are eight phases, each having different conditions, that can bring varying weather to the states. Current analogs support phases 1, 2 or 8, especially later in the winter, which all tend to bring colder conditions to the southern and eastern U.S., and warmth to the west. Now, I'd like to get into some of the analog years for this winter. These analogs are previous winters similar to this winter that can help us predict the weather moving forward. Please note that I am not saying any of these past years will be identical to this winter, 
as no two seasons are alike. My number one analog year is the winter of 2015 to 2016, which featured warmer than average conditions across the east and north. Most of the nation experienced at or above average temps and precip during this year, and December was especially warm. I do think this current winter will not be as warm as 2015 to 2016, namely in the south. Snowfall totals painted a snowy picture across the western U.S. and mid-Atlantic, while many areas in the north were too warm for tons of snow. This year featured the famous winter storm Jonas, which bombarded the mid-Atlantic with heavy snow. The next analog year was 1982 to 1983, which featured warmth across the northern U.S. and cold across the southern U.S. I believe this is what our winter may end up looking like, but did not make it the number one analog year since it occurred so long ago. My last analog year was 2009 to 2010, which featured much colder and much snowier conditions than 2015 to 2016. During that winter, any warm anomalies were confined well north, and the southwest, plains, and east were wetter than average. This year was immense for the northeast and parts of the plains. The west also received plentiful mountain snow. I do not think this winter will be as snowy across the east, but it is a slim possibility. Lastly, here is a snowfall anomaly map showing a wider variety of analog years. I believe the placement of the above and below average snowfall looks somewhat like what this year may be, but I don't think New England will be as above average or California be as below average. Next, and finally before my personal forecast, we'll take a quick glance through the models. First is the CFS model, which is very bullish on warmth for the entire country. I do think this warmth is overdone, especially so in the South. Precip-wise, I agree mostly with what this model shows. With wet conditions in much of the South and dry conditions in the Ohio Valley and parts of the South. The Canadian model is very similar to the CFS for temperatures, though somewhat backs off on the warmth in the South. Precip is similar in the South on this model, but it has much wetter conditions across the West Coast. Next is the North American model, which gives slightly warmer conditions to much of the West and Midwest and average temps in the East. Precip for this model is similar to the last two with a wet east, but this shows a wet California and a dry northwest. The last model we'll look at is the European model, which shows warmth across the north and west but cool in the south. Breaking it down monthly, January is cold across the south and parts of the Midwest while warm in New England and the west. February is very similar, though the cold shifts east somewhat. This model also has snowfall anomalies. It predicts above-average snowfall in the Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, and Sierra Nevada, with below average everywhere else. Finally, here are my forecasts for the winter of 2023 to 2024. Firstly, temperatures. This winter looks to be mild across much of the northern half of the states, especially as you near the Canadian border. Of course, this does not mean you will be 70 degrees and sunny all the time, but cold air may be limited in these areas. The south looks to stay cooler than average this winter, mainly due to frequent cloud cover and rain. Areas in the white have equal chances at above or below temps. Precipitation looks to be heightened across most of the east and south, as well as California. An active subtropical jet stream will promote storms to plague the southwest and east, bringing heavy rains and cloudy weather. The same cannot be said about the north, however, as dry conditions look to prevail. The polar jet stream should be less active this year, bringing less clipper systems and cold air intrusions. Next is my snowfall anomaly map, which is almost identical to my previous map I made for the last forecast. The Pacific Northwest looks to stay below average on snowfall this winter, especially so in the Cascades. Of course, these areas will still see feet of snowfall, but it may not be as impressive as a normal year. The same can be said for the Upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northern New England, where snowfall looks to stay below normal. Lake effect events especially look to be lackluster this year, leading to less snow. Much of the southwest may see above-average snowfall, 
namely due to that active subtropical jet stream. Not everywhere in the region will see higher snowfall, but many areas in this blue shading will. The southeast and mid-Atlantic also look to see above normal snowfall this winter, despite the slow start this year. This is common during El Nino winters. Lastly, here is my official forecast for this winter season across the United States. Starting in the northern Rockies, a less snowy winter should be expected, alongside warmer than average conditions. Of course, warm in this part of the country may only be 30 or 40 degrees, but it looks to stay above average, and with a less active polar jet stream, snow may be limited. The Pacific Northwest and Central Rockies should see semi-frequent storms. You won't see big atmospheric river events every week, but should expect heavy rain events occasionally, especially early in the season. Overall, the winter here looks to be drier than average. The same cannot be said for the southwest, however, as heavy rain and big snow look to become more likely as the season goes on. Of course, not every day will feature precipitation, but more frequent storms look to plague the region. Flooding and landslides cannot be ruled out where the heaviest rain set up, so be vigilant. Similarly, avalanches could also occur in the mountains. Moving to the Midwest and Great Lakes, Warmer than average conditions look to prevail throughout much of the winter, especially so as you near the Canadian border. Again, this does not mean you won't see any snow and will have 60 degrees and sunny weather the whole winter, but on average, expect mild and dry conditions and less chances for lake effect snow. The purple area is where I believe a lot of near miss storms could occur. This may be due to storms not developing until they get further east or south or the area is slightly too far south to get snow and instead see rain. Large cross-country systems may not be plentiful this season, which means areas here may only see light precip from weaker systems. Snow will still happen, but may be slightly below average than in a normal year. The yellow region is where I think this winter may turn out to be fairly average. You should still expect very warm and very cold conditions, as well as rain, snow, and dry weather, but by the end, this region should be near average. The southern plains may end up similar to the Pacific Northwest with semi-frequent storms. This region is right in between the active southwest and active southeast, but may get left out on multiple big storms due to their placement. This area may see average to slightly above average rainfall, especially near the Gulf, and wintry precip may become more likely toward the end of the season. The red hatched area is where I think severe weather may be most likely this season, though this region may extend into Florida. I don't foresee any major outbreaks, at least not through January, but strong storms cannot be ruled out in this area. Most of the southeast should stay very wet this winter, with cold periods due to cloud cover and rain likely. An active subtropical jet stream looks to bring multiple large STRM systems through the area, bringing heavy rain and high winds. Moving north, much of the Mid-South and Mid-Atlantic should expect a slow start to winter, but expect big storms later in the season. Much of the area will be too warm for snow through the rest of December, but a changing weather pattern into January and February should bring multiple chances for wintry weather, especially in the Appalachians. This area will be very boom or bust this year as it is with most strong El Nino years, so make sure to stay vigilant. The last region on this map is much of New England and parts of the Northeast, where nor'easter storms will be possible, especially later in the season. Many will bring mostly rain or a rain-snow mix, but large snowstorms should also be expected. With that, thanks for watching. This will be my last full winter outlook, but I'll post monthly outlooks for the rest of winter near the beginning of each month. Of course, remember that this is just predictions and should not be taken as 100% accurate. Thanks for your time, and have a wonderful day.